Well, good morning. Preacher. Yes, sir. Can I say something? You can. I would like to testify. Amen. Yeah. I'm hearing everybody else. I miss testifying. I miss people standing up. And I miss people said, tell the preacher or, or preacher you got me, you know. And it's something that's just, I don't know, the magic of falling away. <clears throat> but people just don't testify no more. They don't do like they used to do. I say it like that. And I really miss it. Wednesday night, uh, I went to bed about 11 o'clock. <clears throat> and like I said, God's told me many times, I'm sitting right here, stand up and testify. How do I do Nobody else does, you know, so I'm not going to be the one. But hey, I've been here a long time. And if I can't testify, I have to expect everybody else, the new ones, to testify. Yeah. You know? Maybe. So, <laughs> anyway, Wednesday night, I went to bed about 11 o'clock a little later. And the Lord told me, he said, you testify something. And I, did, I just tried to go to sleep. I couldn't go to sleep. 11 30, I still wide awake every once in a while. Now, people can say I think what they want to, but God told me, yeah, hey, Jim, you testify. You know? And still, I just bypass it. After 12 o'clock, I got up, you know, with no sense of laying there. And now God told me when to testify in year two of it before you preached. Because I started to do it earlier. And it's before you preached when I'm supposed to testify. That's what I'm doing. And God told me, yeah, I got up, tried to eat something, make me sleepy. That didn't work. And about 1 o'clock, 1.30, I finally said, okay, I'll testify, you know. <laughs> and I thank God for saving me. Amen, brother. I thank you for my church. This is my church as much as it is yours, and that's as much yours as it is mine. I'm talking about everybody when I say that. All right? Uh, but again, I just thank God for saving me, what he's done for me. He's blessed me through sickness, health, everything. And I miss the people seeing me. Get telling the preacher or old me, you know. And I don't know. I just miss people testifying more than anything, I guess. Man. I used to stand up and somebody would shout and holler and everything else. But anyway, God told me to and God scared not to. There you go. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Well, the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. I know what you're talking about, brother. Uh, you know, I have seen services where folks would stand up one right after another and give a testimony for the Lord. might not have been long. They might have just said, I thank God for saving me, but it was good. Amen. Amen. And, and we need it. Amen. And, and I'll say this, if anybody else feels that they would like to say a word for the Lord, then, you know, you feel free. Uh, that uh, that would be a wonderful thing. Amen. Amen. Don't be surprised you me or amen. There you go. We need that too. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the, the danger with, uh, with, with hollering amen is I might not know when to stop. I'm going to be in... Uh, the book of John, the gospel of John, chapter 14, and uh, we talk about uh, memory or remembrance today, amen, memory, uh, remembrance, uh, John chapter 14, and if you've got an old school field, page 1136, 1136, and uh, I was telling my wife this last night, I thought it was kind of funny, uh, uh, this guy telling his wife, he said, you know, honey, he said, uh, you know, I remember when we first started out, we was living in a one-bedroom apartment, and it wasn't much to speak about. We was driving an old beat-up car, 
and uh, you know the stove didn't half work and and uh, you know we had a TV but it was like a little 10 inch black and white and you had to squint your eye to see if it worked or not and uh, he said that was the bad news the good news was I was uh, I was living with a, a beautiful 25 year old woman and he said but now I'm living with a with a 50 year old woman and he, he looked at his wife and he said I don't know I don't think you've kept up your end of the bargain. Uh, and, and he said, well, my wife was kind of, uh, was taken aback by that. And she looked at me uh, uh, with one eye and said, look, i tell you what, you go find you a, a beautiful 25 year old woman and I'll make sure you get to move back in that one room apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard some preacher, I was watching a preacher the other day, can I say something? Yes, sir. He was preaching to the congregation. He was talking about the evils of men. You know, he got on alcohol, you know. And he was talking about that. And he had a brand new bottle of liquor sitting on the floor of the altar there. And he talked a little bit. He went up and said, I'm going to prove to you about the alcohol. And he opened it up. He dropped the worm in it. And the worm went in and died almost immediately. It almost <laughs> killed the worm, you know. He said, now you see what's happened here now, don't you? He said, what do y'all think about that? He said, some farmer stood up and said, yeah, we drink that stuff, kill all the worms. Kill all the worms. Yeah, uh, but as they say on TV, don't try this at home. <laughs> John chapter number 14. Amen. Uh, it is good to be in the house of the Lord today. And uh, I would say uh, we need to keep folks on the prayer list. We've got a lot of folks that are sick. And some folks heading for surgery and one thing and, uh, and another. And so let's pray for these. And, and uh, you know, when you're sick, uh, you're an easier target for the devil when you're sick. So we pray for these folks. Pray for their strength and pray for, uh, that they would be uh, exhorted and lifted up. And, and if you can help with that. I mean, you know, one, one good ministry you can do uh, is a telephone call or a card. You know, uh, don't have to go, you know, buy one of these seven or eight dollar cards. Uh, go to the Dollar Tree; they got cards. Uh, you can get them for a buck or a buck and a quarter, and uh, you know, write a note in there, send it to somebody, uh, brighten their day. Amen. I, I've got uh, I've got cards that I've kept from over the years. Uh, from some of you, uh, some of these folks when they were little tykes, you know, and they'd come, uh, you know, I remember one time when uh, I was sick and, and some of the little folks, uh, you know, wrote me a card and they drew a heart in there and they said, I love you and, you know, and, and I still got that because it, it meant something to me. It lifted my spirits. Amen. It, it, it can be troubling to be sick. So keep that in mind. Uh, welcome to those of you on the front row. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get to the scripture now. I'm going to start uh, in uh, uh, John chapter uh, number 14 in uh, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you being present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this, uh, your word that we have been privileged to read today. Thank you for these that have come and joined us in this service and those that will join uh, uh, through the front row. We thank you for them. I pray, Lord, there, if there's a heart that... I will hear the word today, and maybe they need lifting up. Uh, uh, they need uh, somebody to sustain them. Uh, or maybe there's a heart today that uh, don't know you as Savior and Lord. I pray that uh, today that they would make that commitment, and Lord, they'd give their lives unto thee. Lift up the discouraged. Save those that are lost. Help us to be the servant you'd have us to be. In Christ's name and for his sake we pray. Amen. So Christ said, I've spoken these things to you, being present with you. And then he says, 
but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send, he shall teach you all things. Of course, he's talking about after he left because the Comforter was not going to come while Jesus was here. But he came after the Lord uh, left and went back to heaven, and he's here today. Amen. If you're saved, it's because the Holy Spirit drew you. It's because the Holy Spirit made you realize that you needed to be saved. It was the Holy Spirit that uh, woke your conscience to the fact that you were lost because without that, you can't, uh, uh, you can't understand the things of God. Amen. But I like what he said. The, the Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And wow, I mean, if you read the Bible, think about it for a minute, and you read the Gospels, and you read the things that these fellows wrote down, uh, I know a lot of people say, well, uh, you know, the, the Bible is just a, a bunch of uh, things that was put together by men. Uh, but listen, you, you can't uh, recall these things like these men did unless you have some help. And, and the Holy Spirit was helping them to recall uh, the miracles that Jesus did, uh, the words that he said. All of these things uh, work together, but I, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, inspiration and canonicity today. I want to talk about remembrance, amen. And as we grow older, you know, we tend to be more forgetful. At least, you know, my wife will probably tell you that I am because every, every morning she'll come and, you know, plop my medicine bottle down on the countertop and say, have you taken this today? Well, of course, no, I haven't. Uh, and, uh, and she's always, uh, you know, uh, after me, take this and take that. Uh, you know, uh, memory uh, uh, tends to fade with time. But, uh, but there's, some, uh, uh, there's some quotes I want to I wanna give you. Uh, you know, the, the, the Bible says uh, that, that the Holy Spirit would bring all these things to our remembrance. He helps us. And, in fact, Jesus said, uh, don't worry in a time when the time comes and they call you and they put you on the spot for your faith and you don't uh, think you'll know what to answer. Jesus said, uh, the Holy Spirit will give you the answer. Amen. Uh, so if we study ahead of time, the Holy Spirit will give you the answer. And I can speak to that. I have been talking to people before, witnessing to people before, uh, and, you know, all of a sudden, a verse of Scripture would come to mind that I wasn't even thinking about, that God just popped into my head, and, you know, I gave it to them, and it had an impact on them. Well, what was that? Uh, my only answer for that is the Holy Spirit gave that to me to share with them. Amen. Uh, the Bible is full of these things. Now, listen, uh, George Washington, our first president, said, quote, it is impossible to righteously govern the world without God and the Bible. Wouldn't it be great if we had a president like that today? It is impossible to govern the world without God and the Bible. Another president of more modern times, Ronald Reagan, said, uh, quote, Within the covers of one single book, the Bible, are all the answers to the problems that face us today. If only we would read and believe. Amen? Well, we need some of that, don't we? We're living in troubled times. The Bible said in the last days there will come perilous or dangerous times. And we're living in those times now. But that don't mean we have to be totally dismayed because uh, the Lord said he would be with us. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go all the way with you. Now, we're living in uh, times when things we uh, feel that we once had are being taken away or eroded away uh, little by little. Case in point, uh, uh, it's been a while back the Supreme Court uh, upheld an executive order that mandated uh, the purchase of health insurance by every American citizen. In other words, uh, they require that you purchase health insurance. And if you don't purchase health insurance, then that'll result in what the, the White House called a penalty 
but the Supreme Court called it a tax. Uh, this, in my opinion, sets a dangerous precedent. Now, taxes, we could go on all day about taxes, but we need to pay taxes in order to you know, uh, keep our, uh, our roads good and, and uh, keep things going. I, I won't talk about the rate, the tax rate, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, this is a new tax. Uh, it sets a da dangerous precedent because the Constitution only allows for one direct tax, that being an income tax. This opens a gateway. And now we can be taxed for anything. We can be taxed because we're too fat. We can be taxed because we don't eat broccoli. We can be taxed because uh, we didn't get our car inspected on time. We can be taxed because uh, our children don't go to public school, but we school them at home. And I think you can see where this is going. Amen. It's part of the world that we live in, and it's going to get worse. You say, well, why is this important? Well, it's important because uh, Psalm 33 and verse 12 said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. It's important because uh, we are here at this point in time and in our nation's history because we have forgotten the Lord. Amen. God is visiting on us some reminders to drive us back to him. So what do we need to remember? He said the Holy Spirit would bring things to our remembrance. Well, we need to remember uh, when we were saved. Brother Raymond was talking about testifying and remembering when people used to testify or when people would say amen and lift their hand uh, and praise the Lord. Or, or maybe when some, uh, 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 you know, somebody may uh, feel the movement of the Spirit and they may shout for the Lord. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, amen. Uh, we need to remember when we were saved. Amen. Peter remembered. The Bible said that Jesus told Peter, uh, he said, I don't want you to be overconfident because he said, when, uh, 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 when the time comes, you're going to deny me. And Peter said, I'll, I'll not deny you. I'll go all, all the way with you. And Jesus said, before the cock crows, you will deny me. Uh, and the Bible said in, in Matthew 26 uh, that the cock crew and Peter uh, had denied the Lord and cursed and swore that he never knew Christ. And, uh, and immediately the Bible said Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which he said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and he wept bitterly. Amen. It would do some folks good if they would remember uh, when God saved them. Amen. That they belong to the Lord uh, uh, because they're living on the fringe now. And they're not dedicated to the Lord like they used to be. They don't pray like they used to. And, and they don't uh, uh, read the, the Bible like they used to. And they don't uh, sing like they used to. And they don't have the joy that they used to have. Uh, brother, it would do them good to remember when they were saved, when God brought them out. David remembered. Amen. After he sinned with Bathsheba, Nathan the prophet came and said, Behold, thou art the man. And the Bible said David repented. Paul remembered when he got saved, and the Bible said that he rejoiced. Even in the book of Exodus chapter 13, the Bible said Moses called the people of God, uh, uh, his people, uh, God's people out, and he told them uh, that they were supposed to remember the time that God brought them out from, uh, uh, from bondage in Egypt. He said, remember this time uh, uh, in uh, Exodus chapter 13. Uh, he said, remember this day, uh, and they did, and they worshiped. Amen. That's what part of what worship is, is remembering what God has done for us. Amen. And then secondly, we need to remember not only the when we were saved, but we need, we need to remember the way of the Lord. Amen. Luke 24, the Bible said, and they remembered his words. This was after Jesus had gone. They remembered his words. What did they remember? Well, they remembered, uh, uh, and we need to remember, the place where we started. Amen. Now, you say, what are you talking about? Well, Peter and James and John, for that matter, they were down by the seashore in a boat. And they were fishermen. And Jesus came walking along the, uh, the beach and he said, come, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. 
And they followed him. They got out of their boat, they left, uh, uh, and they followed uh, the Lord. Amen. Now, they had ups and downs. Uh, as I said a minute ago, Peter denied the Lord, but he repented of that. Uh, and they had others. Uh, 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 you know, John the Baptist, in fact, was put in prison, and he sent men to the Lord and said, uh, ask him uh, if he is really the one that should come. He, he had gotten discouraged. He had gotten down. Uh, he, he was uh, uh, Christ's cousin. Uh, uh, but yet he was discouraged because he was in prison. Uh, amen. And Jesus uh, uh, answered him, listen, uh, beloved, uh, uh, you may get discouraged. I may get discouraged, but we need to remember the place where we started. Peter, James, and John, fishermen. Matthew was sitting at the seat of custom. He was a tax collector. And Jesus came along and, and said, uh, Matthew, come on, son, and follow me. And he got up from his collection and he followed the Lord. Uh, we find that Zacchaeus was up a tree when Jesus met him. He was up a tree waiting to see the Lord. Uh, and, and Jesus was down there talking to the crowd. And he looked up that sycamore tree and said, Zacchaeus, come down. Uh, for this day I must abide at thy help. He knew uh, Zacchaeus was up there. We, we need to remember where God found us, amen, and the path we took, amen. It, it's not always easy being a Christian, and sometimes we go through dark valleys, and sometimes God brings us out of tough places and tight spots, uh, but we need to remember that. And then we need to remember the peace that we found when uh, God saved us. I, I told, mentioned this, I believe, in, uh, in Sunday school. It's worth mentioning again. I heard a preacher talking about it yesterday. I told talking about this uh, uh, Church of the Nazarene preacher uh, before he uh, uh, was called to preach, he got saved. Uh, uh, but before that, he was a farmer. Uh, and uh, he, uh, uh, he, he said he had a mule, and, and the mule, he worked on the farm, uh, but he, would, uh, uh, he was uh, 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 bad to the mule. He would beat it, and he would curse it, and punch it, and kick it, and, and he was bad to it. Uh, but after he got saved, and God called him to preach, he testified, and he said, you know, the first thing I did after I got saved, I went down to the barn and got the old mule and put my arms around his neck, and I told him, I'm not going to ever hurt you again. I'm not going to ever kick you again or, or beat you again or curse you again uh, because God has put love uh, in my heart. Listen, that's what God will do for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, somebody said, you know, God uh, hates sinners. No, he doesn't. He hates the sin they do, but he doesn't hate sinners. He loves uh, sinners. Amen. Uh, and, and then we need to remember something else. We need to remember the poor. Amen. Galatians chapter 2 verse 10 said only that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Amen. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 44, we have heard with our ears, O Lord. Our fathers have told us what thou didst. Amen. God uh, is a friend to the poor. And, and so we should remember those that are less fortunate than we are, amen. I, I told you, uh, I believe, a little bit about uh, uh, some ladies that uh, uh, the wife and I heard uh, uh, a week or two ago. We went to a banquet for uh, this uh, uh, organization that's here in Greensboro called Hannah's Haven, uh, which is for uh, women who had trouble with addiction and with abuse and uh, all of those sorts of things, uh, and, and they're small, uh, uh, but they're trying to get started, you know, and they're doing a pretty good job. And, and uh, you know, so we went to this because they're looking for donations and one thing and another. Uh, and, and we heard some of these ladies uh, give their testimonies. Uh, uh, and uh, I found it interesting. Uh, they said, we don't accept any state money and we don't accept any federal money. Uh, and one of the people who's on the board of directors there, I asked him, I said, why don't they accept state or federal money? He said, because if we did, then the state or the Fed could tell us what to do, uh, and we could no longer tell them about Jesus. And he said, when they come, the first thing they hear uh, is about the Lord. We tell them about Jesus, and we try to win them for Christ, and we keep telling them about the Lord. And all the all these ladies that came, uh, they had all uh, gotten saved, and one of them told uh, her testimony of how she came to the Lord. Uh, uh, and uh, I mean, uh, how God had just woke her up. And she said, you know, I've been there a year, uh, and uh, you know, I've kicked the 
the drug habit. I've left all that behind. I've uh, been reunited with my children. I've got my children back. I'm happy now. But most of all, I've accepted the Lord, and I want to be a missionary. Can you believe that? Amen? Uh, listen, uh, brother, only God can do something like that. So uh, listen, uh, uh, these uh, were folks uh, who were just downcast and trodden. Uh, I, I talked about one lady who, who mentioned that when she was three years old, uh, her father was a drug addict, and he took her, this three-year-old girl, with him to a crack house. And he left her at the crack house as payment for his drug. Can you imagine leaving your three-year-old child at a crack house in payment for drugs? Now, and she told about, uh, you know, she was abused, you can imagine, uh, and how she was abused and the things that happened to her. It's a, it's a, it was amazing that this, uh, this young lady, I guess she was probably 20, it, it was a miracle that she was still sane and able to talk about those things, you know. Uh, but she had gotten saved, and, and she would talk about the Lord, and tears was, you know, coming down her, her cheek. Uh, and, but she didn't hold any animosity toward uh, the people of the past or any of that. She had just uh, pushed all that aside, uh, and she was now working for the Lord. Uh, and, and I said to myself, you know, that is a great work for the Lord. Praise the Lord for something that's happened like that. Amen. Uh, and, and so the poor come in many fashions. Amen. Uh, uh, she didn't have any money. She was a child. She didn't have anything. But she was poor not only in money, but she was poor in love. Her, her parents didn't love her. Nobody loved her. Amen. So it, it, you can be poor in many ways. And God said we're to help them. Listen, when, uh, uh, when Boaz uh, sowed his fields, uh, the Bible said that he, uh, apply, he applied the Old Testament uh, uh, scriptures that said when you sow the field uh, and you reap the field, leave the out, uh, outside for the poor. And he did that. And not only did, it, did he do that, but when Ruth and Naomi came and they were gathering on the perimeter of the field because they didn't have anything, uh, uh, Boaz saw them and said, you leave some extra handfuls for those ladies. And the workers probably said, well, they got uh, stuff they can garner on the outside of the field. And he said, no, you, you leave some extra handfuls on purpose. Isn't that the way God is? Amen. Uh, God gives us handfuls on purpose. Amen. Uh, and he knows our condition, uh, brother, and he will take care of us. So remember the poor. And then remember God's benefits. You know, we all uh, are subject to God's benefits today. Psalm 103 said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. You say, well, what benefits do I have? Well, outside of being a Christian, let me, let me remind you. Let me jog your memory. You, you recognize this. It said, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their creator with certain <laughs> unalienable uh, rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, uh, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. comes from the Declaration of Independence. Now, back to George Washington. It's impossible to govern properly without God and the Bible. Where did they get language like that. They got it from God. Amen. Uh, in fact, the, our own Declaration of Independence says that our government is established not to tax us, not to make our lives miserable, not to assail us, not to send uh, armed uh, IRS agents to the house uh, to take away your things, but our government is there uh, because they derive their powers from the consent of the governed and they're there uh, to secure these rights for you and me. Amen. What rights? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We kind of got off track over the years. We need to remember God's benefits. Now, listen, I know America's got problems, right? We could all quote problems that we have. Uh, but listen, I, I, I've never been to another place in the world that I'd rather live than the United States. Amen? 
I have been to other countries, and my wife will back me on this because she's seen some of this stuff. We were in one place, uh, and as we were going down the road, uh, uh, we saw a railroad track, and alongside the railroad track, there were bushes and trees, and there was a break here and there, and there was people, a man and a woman and some little children. They were living beside the railroad track in a cardboard box. And they had a little fire built out there. They were living in a cardboard box outside uh, this city uh, where all the rich folks were going to shop. I have been in other places where, uh, you know, there were, uh, had been wars between countries and I came through uh, this one desert place and there were still uh, uh, airplanes uh, lying, the skeletons of airplanes lying in the desert. Uh, there were burned out tanks in the desert uh, where we came by that you could see and view all this stuff. And, and when I came to the border and we were about to cross the, the border, uh, there was a, a, a precipice that was probably uh, 75 or 100 feet above us when we crossed the, uh, this little river. And there were camo nets up at the border, and behind the camo nets there were uh, there were uh, tanks and uh, uh, and missile batteries uh, uh, because they were pointing toward the, the potential enemy. And on top of that uh, plateau up there, there were jets that were ready to go at a moment's notice. Uh, and we crossed the border and went in. And as we went on uh, uh, up in uh, in country, uh, we got to a place where people used to live. Uh, I don't know if they were still there. I didn't see any people. They might have been, but the houses uh, had been hit by, uh, uh, you know, weapons, and uh, uh, and uh, there were, uh, you know, uh, looked like 50 caliber uh, machine gun uh, holes in the side of the house where people had been living. Uh, listen, uh, and I said to myself, you know, there is no other place in the world that I would rather live than in the United States of America. Amen. Because I'm not living uh, out of a cardboard box by the railroad tracks, Brother Raymond. I am not uh, living in a house uh, uh, that has, uh, uh, you know, holes uh, in it from machine gun fire or half the roof has been blasted off by a tank or something like that. I have a neighbor... Uh, that, uh, you know, came from Europe, uh, you know, back when war was going over there in Bosnia and all that, uh, and, uh, uh, and they came here, and, and I would say she would have been pretty small at the time, but I was talking to her a while back, uh, uh, and she said, you know, I, I know what war is, I know what uh, fear is, I know what soldiers on the streets and tanks on the streets, and I know what, uh, uh, you know, it is to have to worry and hunker down and be afraid that that, uh, you know, these soldiers are going to come into your house. Uh, uh, listen, I've never had to live with that. We've been blessed. Amen. We've been blessed. Why is that? Because uh, we founded this nation on the principles God gave us in his word. Uh, and brother, we need to stick to that and get back to that. And God will bless us again. Amen. We need to remember something else. Remember your your preacher. Amen. Hebrews 13 said, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of the Lord, whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. Say, so, well, how can I remember him? Pray for him. Amen. Pray for him. I need it uh, because I, I, I believe uh, there's, uh, you know, there's one office in this uh, world that's attacked uh, uh, more than any other, and that would be the office of, uh, of the pastor or uh, uh, deacons or anybody who, uh, who holds office in the church. We need to pray for them. I mean, you don't have to go far to find people who have given up on the standards of the Bible. There are uh, so-called Bible institutes today who no longer believe in the Word of God. I was shocked by this preacher uh, uh, who was preaching yesterday. Uh, uh, and, uh, in fact, it was Brother Ron Beatty from, uh, uh, from Berean Baptist Church up in Winston-Salem. And he was talking about, uh, you know, the Word of God and all that. And he had done all the research uh, on this. Uh, and and uh, he had found that, uh, you know, there, uh, he said there is not one uh, uh, institution, a Christian institution in America that doesn't have 
uh, a staff, uh, some staff, some professor, or some that no longer believe uh, the Word of God. They don't believe it, all the Word of God. Uh, and they pick and choose, you know. Some of them don't believe Christ rose from the dead. Some of them don't believe he was God's son. Uh, I mean, and the list goes on and on and on. Listen, we need to remember uh, the preachers. And then we need to remember uh, 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 to give, amen, so that others may have. The Bible said, but to do good and communicate, uh, forget not. For such sacrifices, God is well pleased, amen. And, and then... Lastly, I'll quit with this. We need to remember that there will be remembering in hell. Amen. Luke 16 said, but Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Now, that's a horrible fault of being in a place that you'll never get out of and be tormented forever and then to remember all of the opportunities that you had. Remember the times that God spoke to you and said today is the day of salvation. Remembering all the times when God called them and said come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest and they refuse. They'll remember that for eternity. You say preacher you believe in uh, a literal hell? I sure do. The Bible teaches it. God didn't create it for us. He made it for the devil and his angels, but people are going there because they refuse God. Amen. Uh, let me give you this uh, illustration. A French, Frenchman, a writer by the name of Alexis de Tocqueville uh, visited America in 1831, and he wrote this. He said, I sought for the greatness of the United States in her commodious harbors, her ample rivers, her fertile fields, her boundless forests, and it was not there. I sought it in her rich mines, in her vast commerce, her public school system, and her institutions of higher learning, and it was not there. I looked for it in her democratic Congress and in her matchless constitution, and it was not there. Not until I went into the churches of America and heard her pulpits flame with righteousness did I understand the secret of the genius and the power. America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. Boy, those are some profound words from 1831. Amen. Listen, we need to remember where God has brought us from, not as, just as a nation, but as individuals. Are we on the path today that God set us on, or have we strayed aside like Jacob and, and we wandered down to Syria with Uncle Laban? We need to get back home. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Hope you got something out of the message today. Meet us tonight, if you can, 6 o'clock for the evening service. Uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, thank those on the front row for tuning in. May God bless you and keep you. Uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And uh, as we pray, uh, Brother Raymond, would you dismiss us, please, sir? I